think right now I'm just like really, really proud. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to have done what I did. I'm proud of, you know, Aaron and I, Aaron is my coach and husband, our work. And I'm so proud to be from this small, beautiful country, powerful country in the Caribbean. I'm so sorry. Um, um, and I am so grateful, you know, I really hope that today was just an inspiration. Today was just a day that just brought joy to my people. I want them to know how much I love them and how much I appreciate them. I want my DOC and my DAA to know how much I'm grateful and how grateful I am for their, their love, their support, um, even their prayers, you know, the people that just reach out and wish me a little good luck. And, um, you know, this is gonna hit, it's probably gonna hit at like 2 a.m. in the morning. And I'm gonna end up like just sobbing in my pajamas. Um, <laughs> but until then, all I can say is how thankful I am um, for one, the opportunity to represent Dominica, and two, um, just the joy that I'm feeling right now, and I just feel just so lucky right now. You had a good college career at Maryland. But nothing, I guess, that would project to something like this. What stimulated you to keep persisting and keep improving and, and keep goal setting? Um, so, for those who don't know, I was actually a really good multi um, in in college, but my high jump coach, Frank Costello, told me that he thought I could go further in trouble. And at first I wasn't sure, um, but then I hated training for the 800, for the outside um, half, um, and realized that my true love was jumping. And so I decided to pursue that. Um, and after my first Olympics, which was 2016, um, I wasn't too happy with an outcome. I got injured, I didn't feel like it was in great shape. And I told myself that I can do better for myself and also as a to become a better representation of Dominica. And I think that's what really fuels me is that you know I want to get better. I, I want to be on a podium as much as off as much as I can be to put us on the map. Um, and so you know, one podium down. Is someone like Julian Alfred representing you know a small like is she is she an inspiration also? Um, so Julian is from St. Lucia, which is a neighboring country to Dominica. Um, we share a lot of similarities cultural wise and I would be lying to you if I said I didn't cry last night when I saw her hold. Um, I messaged Aaron and I told him that I like I, I so desperately want this I don't want to disappoint and his words back to me was like it's okay it's your turn and I one of the three first things I thought of when I got out there to the track after the introductions was like all right, I need a one-two punch for the Lesser and Tilly Islands. Like Julian was the one, I gotta be the two, right? Like let's do it, let's do it. Um, but it was an amazing inspiration last night, and filled me with such pride. And once again, these small countries providing such and for, sorry, just doing such amazing things. Um, and I knew St. Lucia was going to be so proud. And I wanted that same feeling for Dominica. So a huge thank you and a congratulations to Julian Alfred for the inspiration late last night. Um, and of course that gold medal, twinsies. <laughs> oh, okay, good. So obviously through the years, Jamaica and Trinidad have been the, you know, the, the big countries in athletics. And what, what do you think explains now the broadening of of top athletes in other Caribbean countries. Is it, is it access to American colleges or is it more than that or what do you what do you think? I think a big part of it is is the access to American colleges and just the developmental roles that um, the NCAA plays for young athletes. There are very few systems outside, especially in America, outside um, D1 schools that actually provide you with a high level of coaching, high level of treatment, high level of um, recovery accessibility. Um, so when you have everything you really need, you know, all within a few square miles of each other, um, it's it's a really good way for athletes to be able to focus and to really hold, hone in on their skills. And you're seeing a lot more of these Caribbean athletes feed into the NCAA system, at least for a few years, and get really good. And I think that if, and I think that's, that's a, a very, well to me, a very good like winning, you know, kind of um, system. And I think that the more we develop those kind of systems, across the Caribbean, the more opportunities our Caribbean athletes do have. Because not everybody has the ability to go overseas, maybe go to school, but um, creating hubs like that, I think is really important. And I think that's why so many of our athletes from even the smaller islands are flourishing so much. You're an Thank interesting you. model in that you were a, you know, a multi-event, and of course there's no triple jump in the multis, but you wonder <laughs> if all of, like, all of those things that make you good at the multi, 
coalesced into the triple challenge. You, you've made them so. You know, I, I think that it all kind of played into like that body awareness. Um, before I was even doing track and field, I was a dancer. So when you're spending, you know, four or five hours in front of a mirror with an instructor telling you very specifically how to fix something very technical, um, you learn how to take criticism, you learn how to make these small refined changes. And I think those definitely tumbled into track and field and it definitely tumbled into triple jump. I mean, I was introduced to triple by my, uh, my track coach telling me, it's like, oh, you're a ballerina, right? And I was like, yeah, I used to be. He was like, it's three leaps. And I was like, that doesn't look quite <laughs> like three leaps. Um, but yeah, it definitely, you should have seen the first time I tried it. Let's just say my step phase was really almost like midair split. And he was like, don't do that again. Um, but they definitely, definitely helped mold me into who I am as a jumper today. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because now, you helped me, the name is me, but the Olympic uh, discus champion from the U.S. was also a dancer. Oh, oh Valerie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, that's, a, that's a footwork event. Yeah, there's a lot of... Yours is a, a big-time footwork <laughs> event. <laughs> well, there's a lot of dance gymnastics, you know, correlations, ex-gymnasts, ex-dancers that became um, really good athletes. So, happy to be one of them.